So for this episode of Dashcam, I thought I'd do things a little more informal. Uh, I really like auctions, and I don't know why. I don't have any money, so it's not like I can actually buy anything there. But I do like going to auctions, and I like watching them live online. Uh, an exciting one coming up is uh, RM and Sotheby's are doing this uh, Driven by Disruption event in New York. And I've been... Uh, Kind of following the consignments <clears throat> for the auction and I've seen a lot of really cool stuff so I thought I'd do a little preview of what's to be expected and then maybe uh, you can watch it when it's uh, up live next week. So the first lot that's actually a car is lot 201. It's a uh, 73 GTB Ford Daytona Berlinetta. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really like these. I've always kind of felt that the Daytona is a little bit ugly. Uh, I know some people say that it's the the most exquisite design ever, but I just don't feel that way. Um, I think that there are much prettier Ferraris, and uh, I think there's much prettier cars in general. Uh, but eh, needless to say, it's... It's a, a big engine Ferrari, so it's going to go for money. Uh, their pre-auction estimate is 800 to a million. Yeah, yeah, it'll probably go in there. <clears throat> the second lot is a uh, lot 202. It's really cool. It is a Miura P400 Super Veloce. Um, that's <laughs> if you're going to look for a car that's prettier than a Daytona, it's that's setting a pretty high bar. Uh, I think that the Miura is one of the prettiest designs out there. Some people, again, disagree with me, but hey, that's why we have opinions. <clears throat> uh, that one is between uh, 2.2 and 2.6. I think because it's because this one is so nice, I'm I'm gonna say it'll actually exceed that. But I've been known to be wrong before. Uh, the whims of the mega rich are changeable and fickle. So, uh, especially with the lot that follows it, a Bugatti Type 57C Atalante. Uh, again, 2.2 to 2.5. It's a very different market, sort of, but at this point you're really looking at cars as art. So, I could see somebody really cross-shopping a uh, Miura and a Bugatti, honestly, because they're just very pretty cars. Uh, it's something that is a lot of money, so you just spend it where you want to spend it. <clears throat> the, uh, let's see, there's a Testarossa at about half a million. That seems in keeping with the market, unfortunately. I remember not that long ago you could get one for a fraction of that, but, you know. Uh, Lot 205, Cam will really find interesting because it is a Pegaso Z102 3.2 Berlinetta by Touring. It's a, it's an interesting design. Um, it's, that's one of the larger engines that was put into that car. Uh, V8, high strung, revs super high. Uh, built in Spain, it's a front engine V8 with a rear transaxle, five speed, limited slip differential. T technologically advanced for the time, very cool cars. Um, that one's expected to go for about a million, that seems right to me. One of the art cars of the event, Lot 206, is actually a 64 356 SC Cabriolet. And what makes this one different and interesting is that it was owned by somebody famous. <laughs> uh, this one <clears throat> is painted up like a mm, proverbial turtle, I guess, that props up the world. And uh, it's a very interesting unique art car paint scheme. Uh, it was made famous by Janis Joplin. So if uh, you know her 356, you know which one this is. The paint job originally was a little bit different. Uh, it's been restored because the paint flaked a bit and, and it didn't look so good. So it was restored by Janis's family in, uh, I think in the 90s. And it's been <clears throat> at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame since restoration. Uh, interestingly, my boss, 
and a couple of people that I work with uh, in the Cleveland office of Stoddard were asked to go investigate the car and look at, uh, you know, what it looked like and, and what was missing and things like that. And it seemed to be relatively complete. Uh, they checked on, you know, all of the history of the car and whether it had the original engine, original gearbox, things like that. Um, they, the valuation of the car is interesting because they've put it between four hundred and six hundred thousand, which is a lot for an SC cab. However, because of the historical connotation of Janis Joplin and the car and, and rock culture and things like that, especially San Francisco, you know, Haight Ashbury district kind of thing, it's it's probably going to go for more than that. I would expect this car to exceed a million dollars. Just because. <laughs> Just because. That's that's my personal thought on it. it. We'll see next week what it actually goes for. There's a uh, Lot 210 is a BMW 507 Roadster Series 2. This is another car that is like way astronomical on the scale of valuation. Uh, between 2.3 and 2.6. And again, this is something that probably was worth half that less than half that 10 years ago. Um, gorgeous car. It's another one of my favorite designs. So, uh, yeah, just beautiful. <clears throat> um, as pretty Ferraris go, Lot 211 is a 250 GT Cabriolet. Uh, very nice car. They're expecting between six and seven and a half million dollars. There, there's just something interesting about being in the room when people are bidding that kind of money, especially when you've never even seen a million dollars in your entire life. And, you know, I was at uh, some of the Pebble Beach auctions in the last couple of years. Uh, I watched a 956 sell for $10.6 million. I uh, watched a couple of Ferraris in the, you know, eight-figure range. Uh there's just stupid money flying all over the place at some of these auctions. And this isn't even the highest valued car in this auction, which is somewhat surprising and somewhat not really surprising at all. Uh, <clears throat> the, the next one is, uh, this is one of the headliners of the event because it's so unique. It was actually a concept and it's the Lamborghini concept S. Uh, it's basically a uh, Gallardo that has had the roof cut off of it. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, it, it's still probably really fun to drive. It's a 500 horsepower V10 uh, E-gear four-wheel drive. You know, it's, it's probably stupid quick. It was shown at Pebble Beach, and it only has 180 miles on it, which to me is a little bit sad. Uh, if I owned something like that, if I was wealthy enough to afford a $3 million car, I would definitely be driving it. So, rich people, you're using your money poorly. It is a 62 Aston Martin DB4 GT Zagato. Uh, this is another one of those cars that is very rare. This is another headliner for the event, obviously. Um, it's the 14th of 19, made by Zagato. Uh, it's, it was originally delivered to Australia. I don't know who was uh, buying a, a DB4 GT Zagato in Australia, but very cool. Uh, it's been restored at Carrozzeria Zagato. And it's won a bunch of awards. And it's, you know, very highly anticipated auction. Uh, 300 horsepower, uh, Inline six, triple levers, four speed synchro mesh, and you know, DB4 GT. What's well, not to love? It's a gorgeous car. One of the one of my other favorite designs. So this this auction has probably uh, four or five of my top ten most beautiful cars, uh, and this one is expected to go for between fifteen and seventeen million dollars. That's pretty damn good. Uh, blows my mind. Absolutely. Um, a 53 Ferrari 250 Europa by Vignale 
is 3.8 to 4.5. BMW M1, million dollar car now. Who would have saw that coming? Uh, <laughs> 73 RS27, uh, you know, Porsche Carrera RS27 touring package is a million dollar car now. 2003 Ferrari Enzo, three million to three and a half million. These were like $800,000 when they were new. I don't think anything else has appreciated quite that much aside from maybe uh, four GTs. Eh, probably even those haven't tripled in value. They're, they're up there though. Between 28 and 32 million dollars is a 1956 290 mm by Scaliette. That is a gorgeous Ferrari. Uh, 320 horsepower, 3.5 liter, 60 degree V12, uh, dry sump, obviously. Uh, triple Webers, uh, quad distributors. <laughs> I can't imagine trying to keep that in time. Um, four speed manual transmission, independent front suspension, uh, Dadeon rear axle with transverse leaf spring. This is, uh, oh yes, this this is uh, 1956 Mille Miglia history with Juan Manuel Fangio on board. It did not win. It didn't win. It came fourth overall. However, uh, it does have extensive and documented racing history. Uh, irrefutable is the word they use, piece of automotive history, and it is certified by Ferrari Classic K, which is very good. Uh, if you're going to have a vintage Ferrari like that, you have to have it certified by Classic A. Otherwise, it's just not worth anything. Uh, <laughs> uh, whew, it was also driven by Phil Hill. It was driven by Alfonso de Portago, uh, Olivier, Olivier Jean Debian, uh, Eugenio Castellotti, Wolfgang von Trips, Peter Collins, Mastin Gregory. Uh, Joe Bonnier, yeah, the, it's it's got some history for sure. Uh, let's see, it raced at the Mille Miglia. It placed third overall at the Nurburgring Thousand Ks. Uh, second overall in Sweden. Interesting. Uh, first overall at the Buenos Aires Thousand Ks um, in '57. Uh, some of the other cars that are there, let's see, uh, there is a 55 300 SL Gullwing between 5 and 7 million. Jesus. I sat in one two years ago, and I don't think it was even worth three at that point. They've gone up so much. I don't know what it is about classic German cars, but they have just skyrocketed lately. Um, a 55 Ferrari 500 Mondial. At five hundred to seven or five to seven million, uh, this is probably another one that's on my list of very pretty cars at this auction. It's a fifty-three two twelve Inter Coupe by Vignoli, uh, between two and two and a half million. It is a gorgeous black car, uh, lots of chrome. It's got it's two tone. It's black with a dark green roof. Um, I'll put some pictures in the video so you can see that. Just absolutely beautiful. Um, it was uh, restored in 2013, and again, Classic K certified. Um, it, things like this are very hard to value because there's so few of them, few of them that sell. But man, as far as beautiful cars go, the restoration on this thing is spectacular. Uh, the photographs probably help, but it's just spotless. This, this is fantastic. Um, yeah, if I had two and a half million dollars, I'd be bringing that home for sure. Just walk in, put down three, and say, have a nice day, I'll take my car now. Uh, this is another one that will probably upset some people, but 81 Lamborghini Countach LP400 S Series 3. I don't like Countaches. And I've said this on the podcast before, I, I just don't like them, and I don't know why I can't like them. <laughs> they just look like wedges, like a, a doorstop. I just don't, I don't get it. I don't understand 80s supercar fascination. Uh, I don't know. Cam will fight me on this tooth and nail. He loves Countaches. 
It was his, you know, childhood bedroom poster car. I, I've just never liked them very much. I, I don't know. Lamborghini didn't really do anything for me between, uh, say, the mid-1970s up through now. Really, the Huracan is probably, excuse me, the Huracan is probably the most beautiful car they've made. Man, I don't know. Since the Espada? I like the Espada. A lot of people don't. That's another one you can argue there. But I love the Espada. I like the Huracan. I don't really like anything else that they've made since. I digress. Uh, lot 227, a 1954 Seattle 208 S Spider. When did Seattas become almost $2 million cars? I, I just blinked and missed it. I, I don't know. I, I never thought they were worth that much. But, yeah, apparently they are. So, good on you. This is another one. I, I don't know what's so special about this car. Uh, that people are just loving it so much these days. But this is a, uh, uh, what lot is this? 229, a 75 911 Turbo. The early 3-liter cars, <sighs> I get it because they are great cars and it's an iconic Porsche and everything, but they just aren't worth this kind of money, people. I don't get it. It has to be a bubble. It has to be. There's no way... That a 911 Turbo is worth half a million dollars. I just can't see it. <laughs> They're expecting between three hundred and fifty and four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a seventy-five 911 Turbo. Uh, it, granted, it, you know, in seventy-five they only made two hundred eighty-four of them. This one is absolutely beautiful in copper brown metallic. Brown car. I love brown car. Porsche makes brown cars better than anybody. Uh, it's a Japan delivery. Um, leather seats, interior with tan, and uh, let's see. I'm trying to see how many miles are on this. Uh, showing approximately 130,000 kilometers. Uh, no expense spared restoration in British Columbia. Interesting place to restore a car. Um... It's been repainted in its original copper brown metallic, so it's not even an original paint. I don't understand why people are spending this much money on 911 turbos. Again, great cars. I, I love them to death. They're fantastic, fun cars to drive. I might actually love you to death back. Uh, this is a car that will kill you if you don't watch back, but it, I don't get it. I don't I don't get it. I go, I go to auctions all the time, and I enjoy going to auctions, and it's amazing to see stuff like this progress, but would you spend that kind of money? I mean, I'm buying a house for half that. It's crazy. Uh, anyway. Uh, lot 230 is really cool. It's a Ford RS200. Again, a half million dollar car. I'm not sure an RS200 is worth half a million dollars, but at least those are a lot more rare than a 911 Turbo. So, eh, six one, half dozen the other. I can't afford any of these cars anyway, so. Mm. Uh, a 69 De Tommaso Mangusta is 300 to 350. And strangely, they're closing out the night on that car. I, uh, it seems to me like they try to weight the deck to the middle, uh, or to the late middle, and they put the really expensive cars kind of uh, just past the halfway mark in an auction, and it's all kind of downhill from there. Uh, that's not to say that any of these cars are unworthy or anything like that. It's just It seems like after the big one, quote-unquote, has gone... The frenzy kind of ends, and there's a there's a bit of a lull from there until close. And you start to see people filtering out after the the big million dollars, you know, eight figure cars have sold. So this is an interesting uh, bunch of cars. There are some absolutely beautiful cars here. There are some I think a little bit overvalued, but it is an RM Sotheby's auction. They do bring pretty much the best of the best. Uh, I do want to say we are not sponsored in any way, but
by RM. I just really love auctions and thought I would nerd out a little bit about what's coming up. So uh, thank you for listening and like, subscribe, comment, uh, go listen to the Camden Tub podcast every Friday morning at 7.30 a.m. only on Hooniverse.com. Um, I do a lot of auction coverage for flat6s.com, but it's all Porsche-based, so uh, I, I did touch on some Porsche stuff here, but I do it a lot more in-depth over there. Uh, so yeah, if you want to see more of this, let me know. If you want to see less of this, go f*** yourself. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, and have a good day.